The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to, Lord. Be to you, Lord. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the desert for 40 days to be tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and when they were over, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live on bread alone. Then he took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a single instant. The devil said to him, I shall give to you all this power and glory, for it has been handed over to me, and I may give it to whomever I wish. All this will be yours if you worship me. Jesus said to him in reply, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. Then he led him to Jerusalem, made him stand on the parapet of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from there. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and with their hands they will support you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus said to the devil in reply, It also says, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every temptation, he departed from him for a time. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let's remain standing and invoke the Holy Spirit as we nourish ourselves with the Word of God in this sermon that I have prepared for each of you. There was a couple who made a deal with each other. You know how it is with ladies today, husbands, you know what that's like. Your wife is getting ready to go to church and she looks at you and she says, Honey, I've got nothing to wear. And the closets, you know, you can't keep the clothes in there. I mean, the, you can't close the doors, but honey, I've got nothing to wear. And so this one wife, she had, you know, the, 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 the problem. It's, it's a problem. It's a, it's a shopping problem. And so the husband made her promise that she will no longer buy. And so this one time, she's at the fashion show mall. And she's walking through the fashion show mall. And boom! From the window of one of the stores, this dress lures her in. And she goes in. And she gives in to temptation. And she buys the dress. And she tried to keep it hidden from her husband. But you know what the Bible says. Sooner or later, that which you do in the dark shall come out into the light. And so her husband found out. And he says, Honey, I, I thought we had a deal that you wouldn't buy any more dresses. And she looks at him and says, yes, I know, but the devil tempted me. 
The devil tempted me. The devil made me do it. And so the husband says, well, didn't you listen to the Bible, what Jesus says to the, to the devil? Get behind me, Satan. Why didn't you just tell him the same thing? Get behind me, Satan. And she says, oh, honey, but I did. And? And he told me, it looked even better from behind. <laughs> We all have temptations in this life. All of us. We all experience temptations. The word temptation is test, really, there, which is what we pray for in the Our Father. Lead us not into the test. Now, why would we pray, you know, in the Our Father? We're, we're praying to God. Why would we say, lead us not into the test? Because every test in this life is permitted by God. Read the first chapter of the book of Job. The devil is there idle, not having anything to do. And God says to the devil, they're having a conversation. Well, why aren't you doing something? And the devil says, because I've got nobody to tempt. Nobody to put to the test. And God signals, points out Job and says, what about my servant Job? Haven't you seen him? And the devil, the devil says to God, well, yeah, but you have him protected. I can't do anything. And God says, well, I'm going to take my protection off for just a while. And I'll let you tempt him, test him. But nothing will ever bad happen to him. Nothing bad will ever happen to him. No harm will come to my servant Job. Hmm? God allowed his son Jesus to be put to the test. Hmm? In the wilderness today as we heard. God allowed Job and Job came out okay from the test. As the, he got even more. Did our Lord Jesus Christ not come out well? You know, they crucified him and all of that. They killed him. They, huh? But he resurrected. In a lot of ways, we are being put to the test too. Everything going on in the Ukraine. It's testing our faith. Hmm? Testing us and testing our trust. Hmm? It's causing us a lot of anxiety. You know, I mean, I have even family members who are in the Ukraine because my family originally, before they moved to the part of Poland that I was born in, which used to be Germany before the Second World War, lived in what is today the Ukraine, which was, po which was Poland before uh, the... Uh, Second World War. And so, there's a lot of anxiety. And that's where our spiritual life has to hit us. You know, it was my grandmother's birthday this week on Ash Wednesday, and I called her and I said, how are you doing? Because there's even refugees now in my own hometown in Poland. In our town hall, we have refugees and there's more and more coming in, bus loads. Over a half a million right now and the number is growing of Ukrainian refugees in Poland, not to mention all of the other countries. And everybody is all besides themselves. My aunt Yolanta says, you know, we're, we're getting our passports and get ready because we might be coming to stay with you. <laughs> and I said, why with me? You've got your sister in Chicago. <laughs> why me? <clears throat> 
<laughs> so, that's my other family. But I asked my grandmother, and she says, well, I'm okay. And I said, what do you mean you're okay? And she says, well, I got through Hitler in the Second World War. We got through the communist period in Poland. I got through this and she went down the list of everything she's ever been through. I will not let any Putin rob me of my sleep or of my peace. Mm -hmm. Because this too shall pass, she said. This too shall pass. Mm -hmm. Jesus is 40 days in the desert past. Job's time past. And our time will pass as well. But for that, we need faith in our life. And faith isn't about believing. Anybody believes. Mm -hmm. You all believe in God because you're here, I would venture to say. But we have to believe in God's power. That God is all-powerful. And then trust in that power. That we will make it out of this. It's not about believing. It's about believing in the power of God that God is all-powerful, and that this is just a test, and that every test passes. Look at your own life. You've been through a lot of stuff in your life. Huh? You've had a lot of enemies, a lot of snakes. There have been all sorts of Putins trying to rob you of your peace huh? and your sleep. They did it before, and you got through it. So now there should be a forecast because of a flashback of that which happened in your life before. Have flashbacks of events in your life that you got through. You got through them. So forecast ahead. You will get through this, whatever it is, you know, in your own life. You make it out. God is with us. And if God is with us, who can be against us? For that we need God. You know what strikes me the most from this gospel reading every time is man does not live by bread alone. The devil wants to let you know that. That it's all about stuff and your things. And Jesus says, man does not live by bread alone. In 2019, I had this couple come to me because their 14-year-old son hung himself in the garage and they wanted me to celebrate his funeral and also they wanted me to baptize him. Could you please baptize our son? I can't, because he's dead. We don't baptize dead people. He's not going to hell because he's not baptized. If you believe in a God that would send somebody to hell who's 14 and in a state of mind that leads them to take their own life, you can have that God. I don't want him. Hmm? That kid was already in hell. But what struck me the most is how after I celebrated the funeral mass for the young man, they, along with their five kids, became like church mice. Every single mass I celebrated, they were there. Every Bible study, they were there. Everything I had, they were there. And so I asked the mother, I said, well, why are you all of a sudden always in church? And she says, we are doing it for our son because for two years he was asking us to go to church and we always told him the same thing. We don't have time. We're too busy. 
And he wasn't asking to go to a Catholic church. He just wanted to go to church. Because man does not live on bread alone. There is a spiritual side in us and to us that needs to be nourished. Hmm? During this Lent, are you doing any spiritual reading? Are you doing any spiritual practices? Hmm? Are you praying more? Are you taking this in that you need to feed your spirit, your soul, not just your body? Man does not live on bread alone. If we have God, we have everything. Hmm? If we have God, we have the power of God. And we won't let anyone or anything rob us of our peace. And I know some of you are concerned because you didn't get your ash in church on Ash Wednesday. Correct? You did not get your ash in church on Ash Wednesday. Don't worry. I've got ashes for you today. <laughs> you can get your ash at ashes today mm, as a mark of our Lenten journey together. And so I pray for that for each and every one of you as we continue our journey. Next uh, Saturday, make it a point to come because Bishop John will be here to celebrate Mass. So it will be great. And he'll be here, yeah, also on Sunday. So it'll be fantastic. Hopefully you can all make it a point to come next uh Saturday at 4 o'clock. He'll be here next weekend uh, visiting us. So I'm super excited about that as we continue our Lenten journey in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.